All right. I believe we're recording to my computer. I love it when you say ready, ready. Makes me um, happy. <laughs> I know. I am tired. I need I need your your uh, energy. I'm an extrovert. I need energy, Mrs. Contreras. Mm-hmm. If you have it, let it shine. <laughs> also, can we like quickly before we um, get too far into this lesson, just like um, address the elephant in the room? <laughs> Um, that you almost just picked Mr. Spock's nose with your finger as you were pointing at him. Oh, man. So, you have a, is he your favorite Star Trek character? Is he my favorite Star Trek character? No, I think Picard is my favorite Star Trek character. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest. But Spock is pretty great. That was going to be my, my word of wisdom at the end. Spoilers. It's going to be engage. Engage. <laughs> oh, man. I just, I just find that uh, the next generation is just... It, it speaks to my soul a little bit more than any of the other, uh, any of the other, other iterations. That's fair. I really yeah. like Voyager. It just feels, because it feels very different. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Speaking of space, let's talk about 3D space. All right. Wasn't that a great segue? I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> All right. So today's lesson is on 3D vectors. We've been doing 2D vectors for a while. What have we done with 2D vectors, Mrs. Contreras? We um, learned how to multiply them mm-hmm. um, using, we called it the dot product. And that was like with some cosine things and it was very exciting, um, but it was also component wise multiplying and adding things together. We uh, added vectors together. And uh, what else did we do? I feel like we did other things. We made a lot of bad jokes, I think, about like things like um, vector projections, which is, in mm-hmm. my opinion, like the hardest thing to do with vectors. Um, all those things, very useful. And honestly, if you if you if you start to learn about vectors, maybe in college, professors often just go straight to 3D. Um, I find that doing 2D first helps because you get a lot of the the difficult things out of the way, and then it's going to translate seamlessly to 3D. So that's kind of the reason why we do it. Um, we're going to learn. You go from a plane to like a three dimensional space, so you can visualize it from just like what it looks like on a page. To how would it look like when it's like popping out of the page? Mm-hmm. Finding angles between vectors going to be very similar to what we did in 2D. Finding um, projections, very similar. Um, so if you can wrap your head around the 2D thing, which I think is so much easier than 3D, it's going to translate really well. Um, so I think that's one thing that um, is done well here. We, we go from 2D to 3D rather than just you straight into 3D. All right, so now we are at that 3D point, though. 3D vectors. Before we do 3D vectors, let's address the 3D space, 3D space. Yeah. Cause we've been working with the um, XY plane for the past, how many years? I don't even know. When did they introduce the Cartesian coordinate system? Algebra one? Elementary school? Yeah, I guess. Um, we've added a, ooh, I like that R3. That is how we often uh, refer to 3D space um, with uh, symbols. We have X, Y, Z. And actually if you, look down and turn your head, you actually see the XY plane that we were used to, right? You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Look down, turn your head and see it. It's convention that um, the X axis is kind of coming out of the page. Y axis is positive. Y axis is going to the right and Z is, is going up. This is uncomfortable for some people because we're used to X going to the right and Y going up, but this is kind of just, this is convention. You get used to it with time. Okay. We have the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. This is the positive z-axis. Um, I like to ask this question, um, but here's a two-dimensional, I'm going to write R2, plane. If I said, what's the first quadrant? What is the first quadrant, Mrs. Contreras? Uh, it's right here. It's like the top right. Boom. Yeah, and then quadrant two. is going counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, and then quadrant three, and then quadrant four. Okay, so we have names for the quadrants. Um, in three space, in R3, in th- three dimensions, we don't have quadrants anymore. What do we have? I guess we have, like, sections. Right, and how many of them are there? 
boy. Like, how, hey, here's a great question. How many, we haven't talked about permutations and combinations in uh, pre-calc, but some people know about it. How many ways can you permute three things, X, Y, and Z? Uh, eight. Eight ways. There's eight octants. There's positive X, positive Y, positive Z. Positive X, positive Y, negative Z. So that's going to be like this octant. Um, positive X, negative Y, pot. there are eight octants. Um, which one do you think is octant number one? We have positive, positive. I would agree. Positive, 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 positive. Yeah. How about octant eight? Uh, all negatives. Right, but but is quadrant four all negatives? No. No, right? So every year someone like comes to me and says, I think it's this. We don't refer to the octants by name, really. Um, but it's a nice little puzzle to think about. Which octant is the eighth? Which is the fifth? People have told me in the past, um, the octants should be all positive Z in the normal way. So quadrant one, quadrant two, that should be octant two. Mm -hmm. Like where we're going counterclockwise if we were to look uh, from, from the, the sky down. But mm -hmm. uh, I digress. There's no really, there's no octant names. But we do call but, them octants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's four quadrants and that's nice because that makes sense, right? We have positive and negative options. Mm -hmm. in two dimensions so it's two squared and then there's eight octants because that two. makes sense because we have positive and negative options for three dimensions so it's two cubed mm -hmm. eight. all right so we kind of we, we have sufficiently i think introduced this space let's try to graph something give me give me a coordinate triple not coordinate pair coordinate triple that you want me to try to graph on this thing with my mm -hmm. isomorphic skills isomorphic skittles Skills with oh, the skills. Z skills. <laughs> like Isomorphic skittles. skittles. All right. That's <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> word of the day. Uh, let's see. Three, uh, one, negative four. How about that? Okay. I'll, I'll give it a try. I'll give it a try. So three, that's my X. What I like to do when I graph in three space, and we don't often graph in three space, but it's nice to interact with it a few times. I like to go out to the X equals three, and I put a little dot there. I'm going to do the same thing for y, right? Once again, this is positive y, this is negative y. It's a little bit disorienting at first. I'm going to go out there. This right here, I'm actually going to use dotted lines. And I could use the commie dotted lines, but the size of the dotted lines are never really what I want. This coordinate right here, um, in the xy uh, plane, that's the coordinate 3, 1, 0. Right. I, have, I have graphed 3, 1, 0. And I'm actually going to write that. 3, 1, 0. I'm going to graph uh, 3, 0, negative 4. 3, 0, negative 4 now. 3, 0. Negative 4 is down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, down here. Can you kind of see my isomorphic Skittles um, playing a role here? Isomorphic skills. Can you hear me now? Yes, my internet connection is unstable. Oh no! Let's power through. Hopefully, uh, it finds its uh, equilibrium. All right, so I've graphed three one zero. I've graphed three zero negative four, and um, I'm going to graph all of the different combinations where I have one of my uh, coordinates not there. So I'm just one negative zero one negative four zero. One, negative four. Can you kind of see what I'm constructing here? You're kind of making a rectangular prism. Right? And if I do a zero, 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 I get this. If I do, um, I think I'm missing one vertex to my rectangular prism. And I think that's the coordinate that I want. Three, one, negative four right down here. Right there. My nice orange point. That is three, one, negative four. And I think that prism kind of like uh, tells you where it is in space. I think the prism really helps. These are rectangular coordinates too, so it makes mm -hmm. sense if you draw rectangles right. Yeah. 
journal idea for people out there. Think, uh, think of other ways you might be able to graph points in, in three space. Points in two space too. There are, there are other ways besides rectangularly identifying a location. Um, you want to take a stab at it? Sure. I want you to graph. I want you to graph one, two, three. And the reason why I want that is because I want you to graph something in the first octant, if that makes any sense. In that thing that's right in our face. I think it's going to make it real nice to visualize points sitting in three dimensional space. All right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a Ooh. dotted line. One. Then, X equals one. For one. Yep. And then I'm also going to draw a dotted line for y equals two. There we go, y equals two, make this one dotted as well. And then I'm going to uh, look at where x equals three is happening. One, two, three, put a dot there. Um, but what I would like to do is maybe sketch a parallel line so that this actually makes sense. Boom. So what I did was sketch out um, where one, x equals one, and y equals two and z equals three are. And then I found uh, this bottom in the xy plane, uh, the, the rectangle, I guess, that was the base. And then I projected that up to where z equals three. That's how I like to do it. Oh, Mr. Kirk, I can't hear you at all. Can you hear me now? Yes. Cool. Someone talked to me recently. They said, if you have a three-dimensional surface, how can you project that onto the XY plane? All you got to do is get rid of the Z. It's kind of what happens here, right? You have your point one, two, three, and then you're, there's that rectangle on, on the XY plane. You can just just slam it into the XY plane. I like that. Or, or like just look at the shadow, maybe? Less violent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have... We have kind of introduced the three-dimensional plane. Let's proceed. All right. So just some basic um, questions uh, to get us rolling. Just like ordered pairs are used to represent two-dimensional vectors um, in standard position going from the origin to some point, um, we can use an ordered triple to represent three-dimensional vectors. Remember, a vector is a, a, a direction and a length. So in three dimensions, there is a whole new dimension that we can add to our vector's direction. Magnitude is still just going to be a number. Right, so um, use the given points above to find an ordered triple that represents the following vectors. Let's just do A, B. We'll leave C, A for a quiz question. A, B. How many, uh, what is the um, X, what's the change in X from A to B? It's down 14 spaces. So does that mean it's negative 14? 10 to negative 14. Okay. Do you recognize this triangle? Uh, the delta? Yeah, the delta. Mm -hmm. Thanks for throwing the actual word out there, not just triangle. <laughs> change in x, change in y, change in z. Delta is used to describe change. All right, so we're going 14 down to get to b. We're going um, down 3 to get to y2 mm -hmm. and then we're going up four yeah up four. boom it's as simple as that what we're doing is we're doing negative four minus ten three minus six zero minus negative four right x2 minus x1 y2 minus y1 z2 minus change like slope 
x2 minus x y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Cool. Right. The important thing to note, though, when doing b, everyone, is to keep in mind uh, the, what's first. Where you go from where are you coming from and where are you going? It does matter. Because it should be that you go from the C point, whatever vector you had yeah. when you add it, then you get to A. Cool. All right. So uh, vector operations work the same in uh, two and three dimensional space. So if we want to add vectors, if we want to multiply vectors by a scalar, we just got to do it like we did in 2D. So again, that's why I like, I like doing the 2D um, so intensely before 3D. So 3U plus 2V. Thoughts? Uh, so I just want to multiply first before I add stuff together. Cool. So you writing? Uh, sure. Cool. So we have 3U is what? 9, 21, negative 15. Right angle. Boom. Uh, plus, boom. <laughs> plus. <laughs> Two times uh, one negative six three, so that's what uh, two negative twelve and six, and so that boom is uh, what we're going to add together uh, component wise. We get eleven um, nine. And I agree. Yep. Yep. Nine. Thank you. And negative. Nine. Negative nine. That. So, so we're, do, we're doing a little bit here and there, but for the most part, everything is the same. We just added a new dimension. Um, if you think about this, we're going to have a vector from zero to three, seven, negative five, a vector from one, uh, zero to one, negative six, three. And we're basically taking those vectors and adding them head to tail. Our final answer will be 11, nine, negative nine. Turning vectors from a visual thing to an algebraic thing makes the arithmetic really easy. All right, let's continue. So we talked about unit vectors in two dimensions, i and j, one, zero, and zero, one. Um, in three dimensions, they're not exactly the same. We add a third coordinate to each vector. i is one, zero, zero. j is zero, one, zero. And then k, the new one, our new unit vector in the direction of the z-axis, Zero, zero, one. Right. And just like in two dimensions, these three vectors are a basis for three space. So if you give me a vector, I can construct it using some number of i's, j's, and k's. So we won't do v here. We'll just do u. We'll leave v uh, for a quiz question. Um, how many i's, j's, and k's get us to the location in space? Six, zero, negative two. How many i, j's, and k's? when added head to tail, become the vector six, zero, negative two. I think we need six i's, right? We don't need any j's. And so I would leave it blank, yeah. Negative two k's. Yeah, simple as that. You know, someone in class the other day said, um, I gave a problem with unit vectors. And they said, hey, can I turn it into um, a coordinate pair, please? I'd rather do it that way. And that's why we have the coordinate pair. Right? Do it the way that you prefer. Um, but be, be aware that I's and J's and K's are used a lot when talking about things like bases that we've referenced a few times. And plus, it's not super out there because we're effectively just kind of combining like terms, which we've been doing for a while, uh, where you can combine I's with I's and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And actually, later on, we're going to talk about something called the cross product. We've been talking about the dot product a lot. There's another way to multiply vectors. Um, we couldn't do it in 2D, which is why we didn't do it in 2D. Um, but you can multiply three director, uh, vectors in a different way called the cross product. And it requires having I's, J's, and K's to kind of do the operation. So I have a really cheesy joke when we were cross product. Oh, hold it for later. Okay. Um, if we did all jokes now, we'd have nothing to laugh at later. That was really corny. Okay, let's proceed. All right. Um, so let's graph some vectors. We got six, negative three, six, right? Hopefully you can change between i's, j's, and k's and regular vectors that simply, just six, negative three, six. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the difference between this and the first page is before we were graphing a coordinate, now we are graphing a, a vector. So it's going to be an arrow starting at the origin and moving towards, well, not necessarily starting the origin. That's how we're going to do it. 
So cool. six, negative three, six. You so got sweet. Six, six in the x direction. I'm gonna go then, three down. And I'm gonna draw like a parallel line to your x-axis going through that coordinate. Wait, J, we gotta go three. Oh, I did I totally did that wrong. Yeah. Left? My bad. Yeah. That's ah, cool. It's cool. Because it helps maybe to think about like we have our I here. Oh. Then we have our J, our unit vector J there. And yeah. Unit vector K. So you're kind of doing that. You're kind of going on a journey. I guess. It's like Six a eyes. It's a J. Mm -hmm. And then three J's in the opposite to the J direction. And then now we just need to go up six uh, Ks. Right. I'll do it in green. I'm going to do it over. Uh, so like one, two, three, Ooh, like four, five, six. I'm a little bit lopsided, but that's OK. It's OK. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see if we can get this. What I could have also done is I could have done this. I could have drawn the vector. Oh, and then copy over. And then did, no, not even copy. Just a little draggy. Oh, oh. copy tools. Copy tools for the so win. So cool. Boom, this there we so are. so much better than doing with pencil. It really is. Oh, my is. gosh. It really is. Nice. That was my energy waste that I needed. Wow, so great. I still do love the, uh, the rectangular prism, though, that I'm creating. I just like to see it. It's helpful. It really it helps me makes... see what the point is. Mm-hmm. And it's mm -hmm. interesting because it's a, it, it's like effectively like looking at the different projections. Mm -hmm. nice. What do you want? What color do you want to make this vector? Um, what's the combination of blue, blue green, orange, and black? And no, wait, green. Green, orange, and blue. Green, orange, and blue. Is that brown? Feels like brown. It feels like brown. We'll do brown. Boom. Because orange. Ooh, and there's green so many options secondary. for brown. Let's see that one. Boom. Boom. Oh, I lost it. There it is. It's not really brown, but we're going to go with it. Nice. All right, there you go. Right. And you can imagine if we had multiple vectors, not all just six, negative three, six, but if we had other vectors, we could add them head to tail. And we'd end some in some location in space. And from the origin to that would be the resulting vector. Um, it's definitely more difficult to visualize in 3D. All right, let's proceed. Um, do you want to save this one for uh, an exercise? Yeah. Yeah. Exercises are good. Yeah. Negative two five one to negative four ten three, similar, but you are not being given a standard position vector. Mm -hmm. All right, All right. So the magnitude we, we've dealt with um, graphing in three D. Now let's talk about distances in three D. The magnitude of a vector in three dimensional space is found by using the distance formula, just as it was in two dimensional space. Um. Given a vector in standard position, such as A, you can find its magnitude using the formula below. The square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. What does that look like? That looks like the distance formula, except we just have a z squared as well. Well, what is the distance formula? Taking it back to like Greek times. Uh, triangles. Triangles, Pythagorean theorem. Mm -hmm. Let's derive this formula using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. So um, we, need, we need to find the distance between some arbitrary point in space. And for the sake of simplicity, let's um, go from the origin to that point. We're going to call this point X, Y, Z. All right, real quick, I am going to um, draw the parallelogram where this is the uh, the point uh, opposite from the origin. So give me a second to draw that. Is it a parallelogram? Um, it's not a parallelogram. It is a rectangular prism. My bad. Okay. <laughs> Parallelograms are two-dimensional. If you do three dimensions, it's parallel pi sets, I guess. A rectangular prism is a special case of a parallel piped. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay.
wow, Mr. Kirk, it's like you've taught geometry a lot. You're like really good right. at the rectangular prism. I'm actually pretty proud of this rectangular prism. It's very nice. It's pretty good. All right, and this is the length that we're trying to figure out. The distance from one end of the uh, rectangular prism to the other. Right. Um, what is this length given the coordinate x, y, z? Uh, it's x. It's just x, right? Mm -hmm. right? And then what is this length? That's y. Let me break out some new colors so it's really easy to see. Purple's not, I want something that pops. Orange. This is y. What is this length right here? That's z. Okay. Okay. We're getting our um, our uh, all our eggs in a basket. Okay. Um, how can we find that length from the origin to x y z? Well, we can look at what's going on here. It's oh, really that line. We can look at what's going on right there. Because we have a right triangle. I'm waiting for it. Ooh. Right? So green, green, green. So green. then we have like x squared plus y squared equals this green length squared. Let's call it g. Okay, cool. And then we can use that g squared plus z squared. Hey, did you write x squared plus y squared equals z squared somewhere? I did not. I'm going to write it. Okay. I just wanted, I wasn't sure if you're writing it or not. Okay. And so we have g squared, right? That's this g down mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. And so now we have two other legs, uh, I guess, going like Ooh. this way, right? There's g, which is the horizontal, and z, which is popping up. And so the diagonal, like the hypotenuse here, is going to be our like our mysterious length magnitude of a. You, let's give it a name. Let's call it d for distance. OK. Or we could call it the magnitude of a. Is that what you said? Yeah, mag A. Yeah, let's call this vector A, and then let's mag A is what we're looking for. So am I correct in saying that G squared plus Z squared is equal to the magnitude of A squared? Mm -hmm. Cool. And then we also know what G squared is because it was the first thing that we wrote. We have G mm -hmm. squared is X squared plus Y squared. So you just sum that in, and we cool. don't even have to bother with G. Boom. Take some square roots, and we have shown the distance formula in 3D is essentially the same thing. It's just the Pythagorean theorem twice. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared. If you're given a coordinate, do exactly what you normally do. Square the components, sum them, and then square root. Boom. I'm really proud of that, uh, that uh, rectangular prism, not a parallelogram. <laughs> Although it is a parallel pipette. It is made up of parallelograms, I suppose, because you're drawing parallelograms on the page to demonstrate that you have rectangles. All right, so um, what do you want to find, the magnitude of A or the magnitude of B here? Uh, I think since we, uh, we left a harder one for the viewer before, we should do a harder one now. OK, so are you saying B? We should do B. OK, so 3, 5, 0, negative 6, 10, negative 2. So what's the standard position vector that we have? Yeah. Is it like negative nine? Yeah. Negative six minus three, negative nine. 10 minus five, five. Negative two minus zero is negative two. Ah, yep. I keep on doing parentheses instead of wrangles. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we want the magnitude and uh, it's as simple as squaring and square rooting. So square root of 81 plus 25 plus negative four. Plus positive four though, right? Because we're squaring it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just making sure you were awake, Mr. Kirk. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm almost not awake. So that is a very good thing. Mm, I should grab you then. Take a sip of my coffee. Mr. Kirk grabbed me, dear students. He grabbed me in my portable because I was away from the portable. He snuck in sneakily placed the crab painting next to my desk, like next to my computer on my desk. It was very impressive. All of us are I moved it from where we had hung it up before because mm -hmm. it was out of the shot. So now I can perpetually Ooh. crab all of my students. <laughs> and then if you take an infinite account. number of crabs and then you do that thing with the cameras where it's an infinite loop. Oh yeah. Now you have an infinite number of infinite crabs. Wow. 
And that is a reason why there are some infinities are larger than others. Yep. Read Hotel Infinity. <laughs> if you right. haven't yet, like half the class probably has at this point. It's true. Okay, so we, uh, 81 plus 25 plus 4, 81 plus 29, that's 90 plus 20, 110. Okay. Sweet. Square root 110, does it simplify? 55 and 2, 5 and 11, 2, 5 and 11, no double prime factors, no perfect square um, factors. Boom. Cool. Sim simplified. Okay, let's, let's continue. We're doing a lot here because we're, we're knocking out basics. Um, so we're kind of doing a lot, a lot of little things. All right. The angle between two three-dimensional vectors. Hmm. Can we use the dot product? Can we use the dot product? Do we know that the dot product works for 3D vectors apart from the fact that I said it did earlier? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> so spoiler alert, it's going to work. But... But let's proceed as though we didn't know that the dot product was the exact same in 3D. Okay, how are we going to figure out what the dot product is? Then? Right. Regardless of how many dimensions you're in, though, something is true about this picture yeah. here. Um, what is our shape that is on, on this page? It's a triangle. It's a triangle. That triangle is in how many dimensions? Uh, two. That triangle, while it's sitting in three space, it is still two. It's a two-dimensional triangle. It's not a pyramid it is a triangle so what's true about triangles um trig works trig works hey what is the vector d there by the way d is oh the vector d it's like the distance between the endpoints of v and w think vector summation think adding vectors uh, it's V minus W. Here's what I, I, so V plus D equals W. I always write that out. Okay. I can never remember what the, uh, the sum is. There's a subtraction, but I want to make sure my arrows are going in the right direction. So I always write that out. V plus D is equal to W. And I want D. <laughs> DW. Like the character hey, from Martha. And I say, hey. Hey, what a wonderful, what a wonderful guy. Okay, let's not do that to them. Um, I am a hundred percent in. I'm a big fan I know of Arthur. How I would do that. Big fan. Big fan of Buster. Favorite character, easily. <laughs> Good guy. All right. So we got D is equal to W minus V. We have V, we have W. We want the angle. We're given a vector V. We're given a vector W. D is just a resultant of W and V. How can we get that angle? Cosine. Cosine. Law of cosines. So what's it going to be? D squared or W minus V squared? The magnitude of W minus V squared is equal to mag V. Uh-oh, I'm doing it again. It's fine. Minus two <laughs> V W um, cosine theta. That's boom. Nice. Um, algebra time. Let's do it. Okay. Let's uh, let's move everything around a little bit before we actually um, actually plug in the numbers that we know. X one Y one Z one and X two Y two Z two. What is cosine theta? Uh. Like moving this stuff around. So we yeah. have uh, W minus V magnitude squared minus, oh, but all the negatives are going to go away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then maybe we have uh, V squared, magnitude of V squared plus magnitude of W squared minus magnitude of V minus W squared divided by two. All divided by, not two. Oh, two times magnitude of V. Yeah. Magnitude. Yeah. All right. Sorry for making you do some serious mental math, but <laughs> you got to the end. Proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So I've been let's watching plug this, in. I've been watching this, this anime is uh, hilarious, and uh, they they play volleyball, and then 
like when when they say thank you, it's uh, it's like Oss! it's like very intense. <laughs> I was like almost did that to you, but I, I feel like I feel like that's what people doing volleyball when they like they make there's lots of weird sounds that happen in volleyball. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> okay, v squared. What is the magnitude of v squared? Um, do you remember from last uh, last video? It was the last thing I said. No, sorry. <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. It's okay. So it's it's x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Uh huh. Square rooted, right? Uh huh. And then, then square. Again. So it's just those quantities squared. But the thing I was going to say, one, 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 it's a V dot V. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? I'm not actually going to put that in here because things okay. are going to cancel, but V dot V, X squared, X one squared plus Y one squared plus Z one squared. That is the magnitude of V squared. Mm -hmm. Magnitude W squared? Uh, X two squared plus Y two squared plus Z two squared. Sweet minus um, the magnitude of W minus V squared. What is W minus V? Uh, X2 minus X1, Y2 minus Y1. X2 minus X1, Y2 minus Y1. And then Z2 minus Z1. Minus Z2 minus Z1. So that squared is, that magnitude squared is? Uh, X2 minus X1 squared. Oh, and then I guess we should be responsible with it. Yeah, yeah. Nice. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Y2 minus Y1 squared. Z2 minus Z1 squared. squared. All over. Okay. I'm just for now, I'm going to leave it as V and W. Okay. We can put it in X squared, Y squared. Square roots. I'll, I'll, let's save the square roots for the end. Okay. These, are, these don't have square roots. But these will. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. All right, I think some things are going to cancel. Yeah. Um, we got x squared, x2 squared. We have an x1 squared. What else do we have from this square? Uh, minus 2x1, x2. Yeah, so we have, I'm actually going to write this out right here. Let's get a different color just to differentiate it a little bit. x2 squared plus x1 squared minus 2x1, x2. Do you see what's happening? Yeah, there's going to be canceling. It happened last time. Can I cancel? Uh, yeah. As I write them, you can cancel them. From here, we're going to get y2 minus y1. No, sorry. y2 squared plus y1 squared minus 2y1, y2. I can see the dot product happening again. I hope that um, other people can. If you can, it's okay. We're going to get there. We're not going to skip it. Z one Z two, boom. Love the colors. Thank you. I try. Wow, that's very satisfying. And then we have minus negative two, so two x one x two plus two y one y two plus two Z one Z two. Can I cancel? Yeah. Yes. Zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> that middle one was a little. Uh... Yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> X1, X2, plus Y1, Y2, plus Z1, Z2, divided by V, W. What is this saying? Cosine of that angle is equal to the, like our component wise product sum uh, divided by our magnitudes. Well, I think I think what I'm what I'm trying to get at is I'm going to multiply both sides by v and w. Mm -hmm. v w cosine theta is equal to x1 x2 y1 y2 z1 z2. Dot product. Dot product. The dot product is the same. It is except with the the z component added. Right? This is the definition of dot product. Work. Magnitude, magnitude, cosine of the angle between them. And given two vectors, don't worry about finding the magnitude of one vector or the magnitude of the other. Um, if you want to know the work that's being done, you just need to multiply components. Now we want the angle. So let's jump back to here. I think we need our cosine. Mm -hmm. 
And then we need to be smart enough to know when that angle that we're being given is the correct angle or mm -hmm. if it's in the wrong quadrant, just because our cosine does have a restricted um, range. Not restricted range, but uh, it might not give you what you want. All right, um, we were asked to find the angle between the two vectors, and we did. It's the same thing, right? Specifically, if I go ahead and erase it, the dot product. Uh, what is that going to be? V dot W. V dot W. Boom. The bam. And um, we can use this to find uh, A, the angle between vectors, but also B, if the two vectors are perpendicular. Because you can find the angle between them. Because it would be zero. Yeah, no matter, would be zero. no matter which way your vectors are pointing, if the components product and sum equals zero, you're going to get a perpendicular vector. So we know we no longer are in two dimensions, but the same rules are applying, which is really nice, which is it's very nice for it to be so simple. There's no reason why it needs to be this simple. The world is beautiful and mathematics is perfect. <laughs> um, we got two. We got two examples here. We're almost done with the video, everyone. Let's let's do an example just for the people out there that want to see an example. Uh, find the angle between the following pairs of vectors. What is the dot product between these two vectors? Uh, it's going to be two. Uh, Ooh, be careful here. This one doesn't have a K. So that's going to zero out. Yeah. The J's don't zero. We get a plus eight, right? Uh -huh. And then I'm going to go ahead and add it just for the sake of it. Three times zero, which is zero. Sounds good. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be a little bit more um, clear. One times two plus okay. negative two times negative four plus three times zero divided by. Uh, root, let's see. 1 plus negative 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is... I think it's 13? It's going to be 15. 14, 14. 14. 14. Yeah. 9 plus 4 plus 1. Yeah. And then okay. over here, we get 4, four plus and 16, 20. 20. Sweet. So we're going to get one, uh, 2 plus 8, that's 10 over square root... Um, root 14 times 20, that is root... Um, 280. Okay. I don't know. We get this point, we can just do some arc cosine. Okay. Our cosine is going to give us um, angles between what two numbers, Mrs. Contreras, as I, as I do this? Uh, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Careful, be careful. You're thinking sine. Mm -hmm. Our cosine is the, the money one. Uh, zero to pi. Yeah, zero to pi, right? And if, in degrees, zero to 180. Okay, I got 53 degrees. 53.301 degrees. Um, there are these two vectors. One negative two, three, and two negative four, zero. They are in space. I don't know like what their orientation is. But there are two angles that are between these two vectors. There's this one, and then there's this one. Right? If you give me two vectors, they sit in a plane together. And the angle that we have just found is which one of these two? Let me go ahead and call this one one and this one two. Did we just find angle one or angle two? We found the one that was smaller. Yeah. One. When, whenever you have two vectors, you will have one angle between zero and 180, and then one between 180 and 360. This is always gonna give you that, that angle between zero and 180. So if you want, if for some reason you want the other angle, it's fine. Just, I don't know what you would call two angles at sum to 360. I bet you it has some name that's been lost to time. Um, but double the supplement, I don't know. <laughs> double supplement. 53, we have found this, this more acute angle here. All right. That one will be left as a, uh, as a, oh, you know what? I'm looking at it. That's a cool answer. Let's keep going. <laughs> All right. Um, parallel perpendicular vectors. Um, let's do this. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. We've got three problems here, then we're done. Are any of these perpendicular? 
I challenge you to find out if any of them are perpendicular. The other two will be left as an exercise. Is one perpendicular? Negative six. Ooh, negative eight and 12, that's big. What's that gonna be? 80 plus 16, 96. And six and nine. Oh, I don't think that one is, is uh, perpendicular. We're not getting to that beautiful number zero. Oh, I think three is. Three? Maybe not, actually. Let me know. I don't think it is. Huh. Mm -mm. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that I read that wrong. That was a tray. I thought it was a tray, but the first one I said. Oh, no, so we oh it is yeah, yeah, yeah. it is the the j and the k's have confused us again so we got six times four is 24. Mm -hmm. we have zero j here two j here and then minus 24. minus three times, three times. nice all right the the dot part is zero which means cosine of theta is equal to zero over some magnitudes cosine theta is equal to zero at 90 degrees or 270, but if in the angle between two vectors is 270, that means that the other angle, the one between 0 and 80 is 90. So we're perpendicular. Boom. Perpendicular. Can we talk about how I drew perpendicular and then you dropped a crab in the exact perfect spot? That was pretty mm -hmm. special. Yeah. All right, let's close this one out so it doesn't get any longer than it already has been. Um, but hey. We are doing we're doing vector stuff. We have two more vector lessons for you, 3D vectors. Um, they're going to involve 3D vectors, but hopefully the basics are um, in the pocket. Stop this share. This is Contreras. Any uh, words of wisdom? Engage. Engage. <laughs> I did not come with any words of wisdom that were Star Trek related. That's okay. Oh my. <laughs> All right, let's close this one out. Cool. You do Good the honors. Vulcan salute.